Hello, my name is Dejanae Hickson. I'm 21 years old. And on behalf of everyone, I want to thank you all for joining us today. We here are all on a journey of learning. Learning to support ourselves and our families. Learning skills and knowledge that are valued in our economy. Learning how to use our voices and our power to make our communities better. While also learning how the systems work and don't work for us. Many of us stumble on this journey, but that's part of the learning process, right? But too many of us struggle to bounce back when we do fall. We spend time out of school and out of work looking for any way back in. And here with Opportunity SD and the Opportunity Summit, we worked, we worked together to help us get back to school and about building systems that help us stay on track. In our work together, we have to know whether we are making a change or just making noise. And that's why we look at our data each year to track our progress against two goals. And that's cutting the rate and having the gap. And I can tell you that the news is great. The latest data is for 2017, and the point in time count for the disconnected youth compared to 2015 is at 37,000 youth, and that's 6,000 few disconnected. That's 8.7% of all of the 16 to 24 year olds, and it puts us on track to exceed our goal in 2020 if we keep improving. We also care about equity so that youth in every community within our counties are getting the support they need. And so we faltered in our progress on the having the gap goal because the youth in Otay Mesa and South Bay are still doing worse than the youth in the county altogether. Our South Bay brothers and sisters need our help. We are all young adults full of promise, full of talent, and full of opportunity. So let's help everyone reach their fullest potential. And once again, I thank you all. Thank you, Dejeuner. My name is Mallory Webb, and I'm 20 years old. Growing up in San Diego and experiencing many trials, such as homelessness, barriers in education, and job security, I've developed a passion to target youth before they are considered transitional or struggling. Currently, the data says there, are only, there is only 3.7% of youth between the ages of 16 and 18 that are disconnected. In my experience, the percentage of disconnected youth are inaccurately low in this age range. Youth that are under the age of 18 are not considered in this data, because as long as they are minors, they are in the custody of an adult or system. I find this to be true because of the laws that are set in place to keep minors in school or under supervision through different entities such as Child Protective Services and many others. For there to be a change, I believe there needs to be programs that are inputted in schools in our communities. These programs should be available to minors for, more, for a more accurate count of the youth that are not only opportunity youth, but also at risk. Hello everyone, my name is Khadija and I am 19. I am not from San Diego, but I have seen the frustration of black disconnection in black communities throughout the United States. One in five black youth are disconnected in San Diego compared to one in nine white youth due to the systematic barriers. Um, so due to the system. <laughs> San Diego leads second in disconnection throughout the United States in black youth disconnection. Hello, my name is Stephanie Hernandez and I'm 24. Growing up as a Latina in Southeast San Diego, I have firsthand seen the disconnection of youth in my community rise over the years. The data states that 10% of Latinx in the county and 14% of Southeast youth are disconnected. The data doesn't account for the financial, social, and health challenges that many of youth and their families face every day. 
Even though I was able to break away from those statistics by graduating from a four-year university, it did not guarantee that I would be a job-secured youth. Like many of the 12,352 unemployed youth in the county, I found myself actively looking for work for eight months, but unable to find it. My hope is that today you will learn that your investment in youth doesn't end on graduation day. And as members of the council, we hope that this summit provides you with the tools to make an impact that will last a lifetime. Josue. Hi everyone, my name is Josue Hernandez. Uh, I'm one of the oldest members in the council. I'm actually here because I've grown up here. Um, I've grown up in the foster care system. I've grown up uh, experiencing many tribulations in the San Diego County. Um, and the San Diego County has failed many people in my community and continues to fail people in my community. Um, if you <clears throat> see the data, you see that one in 10 opportunity youth actually were told to go to school and achieve a diploma or uh, some kind of a degree. And after graduation, do not um, get that life that they were told uh, would be at their disposal after graduation. So I'm here to bring awareness to that fact. And so within the data, unfortunately, some youth were not or could not be reached. Homelessness among young people ages 18 to 24 in San Diego rose 39% from 2016 to 2017 alone. That's a shocking number. The next step is finding a way to include them in our plan and utilizing the reconnection as efforts towards their journeys off the street. I stand here representing many young adults who have struggled with this not only in these years, but starting from a young age. However, I also represent what one can achieve once overcoming those hardships and provided with the proper resources. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Samantha Harmer. And after spending six and a half years in the foster care system, I've developed a deep understanding of what it's like to feel as though a system has failed me. Today, I'm here to represent the one-fifth of foster youth who end up homeless after aging out of the foster care system, the one half who are unable to obtain employment, and the 97% who do not make it to graduation and higher education. Hi, everybody. My name's uh, East Coast. Uh, I'm ready for, uh, yeah, that's right, woo, yeah. But, uh, and I'll be representing the juvenile justice uh, youth. Uh, I just wanted to say that most people don't know that a lot of juvenile justice youth are disenfranchised, meaning like as far as like employment, housing, et cetera, et cetera, and other barriers. But one of the things that like I feel like really plagues them the most is employment. Uh, just because when you get out of uh, an institution or anything like that, it's that, that barrier of employment, uh, they just demonize you and like how you are and how you present yourself as if like you're not trying to get your life back on track applying for this job. And then another barrier that really plagues uh, juvenile justice youth is homelessness. Uh, they're out there, they're on the streets, they don't know where to go, they can't get somebody, to their landlord, to allow them on a lease because they might have a record. Someone like me, you know what I mean, I'm a violent, I'm a violent offender, so therefore I don't qualify for a certain Section 8 housing and I can't get in housing. Or just like, how can I say it? And my record, like I'm on probation right now for illegal possession of pepper spray. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that's just my bit. I want to pass it over to my uh, good friend. Marco. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Marco Flores. My parents separated when I was one years old. My first memories of them were leaving vulgar messages on their voicemails. Um, by the age of 10 or 9, I was diagnosed with ADD, ADHD. Uh, and prescribed Adderall and Concerta, which caused deep depression and a terrible lack of appetite. I dealt with that by becoming dependent on drugs and alcohol uh, by seventh grade, and that lasted all the way until the end of last summer. I put myself through rehabilitation, and I'm now 10 months sober. 
I'm enrolled in an amazing program. Some of you may have heard of it. It's called Gateway Transition to College. Uh, they offer that at San Diego Continuing Education. And I'm just so grateful to be here with such a wonderful team uh, to enlighten you all on, on the disconnection right here in San Diego. Thank you. I hope you all are excited to be here. This is the third year of the Opportunity Summit. Um, the first two years were focused on awareness. Uh, to solve an issue, you need awareness. Hopefully today, you all come out with solutions in regards to this disconnect that we're facing in San Diego. Um, some areas not doing the best as other areas, but um, what we as a council want you all to understand and walk away with is that the San Diego Workforce Partnership cannot do this alone. Uh, we need everyone in here to be an active member in solving this issue. Uh, this issue solves a lot of other issues. So solving this issue will solve the segmented issues that we are interested in. So this is why it's such an important issue. Uh, we also know that um, we need the private sector to come in and invest in local talent. One of the biggest issues, uh, being disconnected, um, means that you aren't able to have the skill set to go into the workforce and solve, uh, feed for yourself. Teach a man how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. Our, our demographics don't know that. Um, another issue is that we need to move away from uh, a program-based approach to solving these issues. Programs are great, however, they don't solve the issue at large. We need a policy reform, so with that, I thank you all, and I'm glad you all are here. It's important to get public officials that will, will help us lower our rate to 7.3 by 2020. We need to elect officials that will take their time to continue working in the community and help us get to our goal while also continuing through past uh, events. Um, so it's important to go out there and get officials that will invest in the opportunity youth and continue with us. There are many hurdles that Opportunity Youth face. Today, we're here to acknowledge that disconnection isn't black and white, but it's our journey from short-term survival to long-term stability. Thank you all for being here, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the summit. Um, not everyone probably knows this, but that group of young people up here who just shared a little bit about themselves and about some of the data that we've uncovered over the last year has been working with us for the last year. They, they're called the Opportunity SD Council, and there were many late nights and bus rides after work and school um, to get to our offices or somewhere else to go through the data to learn about advocacy and sharing their story. And so there was a lot that went into that, and, and those young people are really leading and, and we're following. And so we're really, really just so proud of the Opportunity SD uh, Council. So if you see them, tell them thank you for putting all this together and really leading with their stories. Um, this is the third year of our conference, and I should probably say my name is Andy Hall. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the San Diego Workforce Partnership. So this journey of ours, of all of ours, uh, for those of you who are new, uh, this is our third summit, and it really started about four years ago when myself and a few other local leaders had a chance to go to Chicago for a conference. And at the end of the conference, uh, a young man stood up, uh, and said, you know, before you all leave and go back on your planes and trains and automobiles back to your hometowns, I want you to remember a West African proverb that my grandmother told me. And he said, if the youth are not initiated into the village, they will burn it down just to feel its warmth. And that got us thinking, and it got me thinking, and it said, how well is the, the village of San Diego, the county and city of San Diego, how well are we as a region initiating our young people on the journey from childhood to adulthood. And it turned out not great. At that time, four years ago, the latest data that was available showed that there were 53,000 disconnected youth, and disconnected youth is 16 to 24-year-olds who are not working and not in school. That's about 11% at the time. And we also found really troubling disparities between place and the neighborhoods and uh, race and ethnicity of disconnection. And we also learned as we went on this journey over the last four years that youth disconnection rates not only affect, affect the health and wellness of the families um, and the young people that are disconnected, but has big impacts on public safety, civic engagement, 
um, in our economy as businesses struggle to find the talent that they need to propel their businesses. And since then, San Diego County, as Dejeuner and the team up here said, we've made some very good progress that we should be proud of. Uh, it's in your bifolds on your tables, but it's all the research that we've done with our partners of Measure of America that said uh, we're down to 8.6 from over 11% over the last three years. That's something to be proud of. And while national rates have declined as the, the economy's gotten better over the last four years that we've been tracking this, uh, we're really happy to share that the San Diego declines have outpaced the county or the country nationally, and that I think is in big part to all of you, so give yourselves a hand. But I also believe we're at a pretty key moment in our movement here. The hardest work is still ahead of us uh, as we really work to recession-proof and lock in our gains over the last few years and make sure that we work harder uh, with our brothers and sisters in South County as well as other parts of the region where youth disconnection is still very high, almost twice the county average. So there is so much work to be done. Um, and that's why we're here. So today we have an amazing program filled with new allies and old friends. Your experience today is centered on three key ideas that have really anchored our work for the last year. One is youth voice, youth experience, and youth art. And because we cannot pretend to do anything for young people without young people, 25% of the audience today are young people who were able to attend from our various partners uh, free of charge, and thank you to some of our generous sponsors. And because art and music opens our hearts and minds to find deeper truths, strengthening our resolve and our hunger for justice. So throughout the day, there's various different art from young people and music and up dancing and poetry that for me at least is just absolutely important to kind of strengthen my own resolve about this work. The second kind of key tenet of our work is measurable goals and deeper understanding through data. So several sessions, including the one you just heard, is anchored in our primary goals that Desjeuner talked about to cut the rate and half the gap by 2020. Um, and clear goals are important to understand if we're doing well, if we're on our way, because good intentions just simply are not enough. And the third anchor that really highlights our work over the last, that has highlighted our work over the last four years is something that Josue just talked about. It's the idea that programs are important and we all run programs, many of us run programs and programs do change life and that matters, but it's systems, structures and policies that have the power to transform our communities. And so throughout the day in the breakout sessions and the plenary sessions from the homelessness system to the criminal justice system, we need as a community to tackle these and take on these hard conversations about our systems and structures and the policies that are behind them.